To get started on this project, you should have downloaded the Swing Set Adobe Animate file. When you open it up, here's what I'm giving to you. The first thing you should do is to go up to the zoom level and let's show the frame. This way you can see everything that's a part of it. Next, if you'll look at your timeline, you can see that there are three different layers already established for you. In the first layer, this will give you the base of the swing. In the second layer, there's a storyboard, which is what these are up at the very top corner. Now, this is going to give you the two most extreme poses of what we're going to be animating, which will be the girl swinging from back to forth, and it shows how her body should be moving from pose to pose. What we're going to be doing in this video is animating all of the breakdowns between each of the poses in between. Finally, on the reference layer, I'm giving you a reference for what the girl should look like so that we can pose her in each of the different keyframes. If you go over to your Libraries panel, inside of the library, we're also giving you all of the different symbols that make up our final girl as she's animated. So there's nothing you'll have to redraw to create this document. To get started, let's establish all of our keyframes for the different main poses. The entire animation should last 65 frames. So let's go all the way to the 65th frame and click and drag for that frame on all the layers. Then when you hit F6, we'll insert a keyframe there. The first thing that we want to animate is going to be the swing. So we're going to focus on just the swing layer for now. I'm going to lock down my reference layer. And with the swing layer selected, we want to add three more keyframes that are evenly spaced in between here. So the middle between 65 and the first frame will be the 33rd frame. So select that and hit F6. In between the 33rd and the first frame will be the 17th frame. We'll hit F6 there. And then in between the 33rd and the 65th will be the 49th keyframe. And we'll insert one at that point too. Now we can go in and place the position of the swing for each part. Let's go back to the very first keyframe. We're on the swing layer, and you'll notice that with the swing selected, they've already set the pivot point at the top center. When you choose your free transform tool, there's nothing we need to change for this first keyframe, but go into the second keyframe. We want it to swing to the right first, and we want it to swing at 65 degrees. So with it selected, let's open up our transform panel and let's set our rotation to negative 65. This will swing it outward that way. Go into the next keyframe. This will bring it back down and then go into our 49th keyframe. We want it to swing to the left 65 degrees. So with that keyframe and swing selected, let's set this to be a positive 65 degrees. And then you can see our 65th frame will go all the way back down from here. Now we can add our motion tweens between all of these. So selecting the first keyframe all the way to this keyframe, right click on it, and let's add our classic tween. Now if we were to play through all of this, you can see it's just going to move in kind of a robotic fashion. What it's really missing is the easing in and easing out. So let's take it one frame at a time. Going back to our first keyframe, we want this to ease out as it moves upward. So with the first keyframe selected, let's go over to our properties panel and under tweening, change the effect from classic ease to ease out and then double click on quad. As it returns back down, we want it to ease in moving downward. So with the 17th frame selected, change it from classic classic ease to ease in, quad going down. Now once it returns to the center, we want it to ease out going up. So with the 17th one selected, excuse me, with the 33rd selected, let's choose ease out, quad, and then finally with the 49th keyframe selected, let's choose ease in to have it return in and double click on quad there. Now when it plays through, it's going to swing in a much more natural way. With that done, let's go back down to our swing layer. We're going to lock it down. Now let's work on the reference layer to pose our person in each of the different keyframes. 
Now, if you're following along with the book, the book would have you draw off a rough and a tie down illustration for each of these different poses. To be honest, this is the, the one way that you could work to draw this off. However, I'm finding it a little bit easier to take a reference image of the person and simply pose her exactly where we want it to be rather than to go through and to redraw off everything. You can work either way, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to take the reference image and to pose her uh, into each of the different keyframes. Now, when you look at your reference person, notice that each individual part is already broken up into its own individual thing. Just be sure to be careful about how you click on it and move things around. For the most part, you can make all of your selections using your free transform tool. However, if you find it easier to use your selection tool, your black arrow, you can do that. Just be careful not to click on the edges to accidentally distort or warp the uh, image as you're drawing it. The first thing we'll do is to rotate and position the lower portion of the body. So selecting all of the leg and the feet, let's drag it over and choose your free transform tool and click and drag and rotate at 90 degrees and place her right about here onto the swing. Then let's select the upper portion of the body and place it on top. Now we want the back of her back to meet the upper portion of her thigh as well. So this is looking, looking correct right in this position. Now one thing that's going to become critical to each of the poses of her body is the position of her hand on the rope of the swing. If you look at our storyboard, you get an idea of what's going to be happening. She's going to be leaning back in order to gain momentum moving forward. Then she's going to lean forward and her feet are going to go back as she comes back on the backswing. Her hand is going to remain in the same position as her body moves back and forth. Also, the hand, whenever you grab onto the swing, isn't going to go any farther than you would normally grab or reach above your shoulders. So we're going to place her hand right about that position. So to do this, I'm going to zoom in and let's use our black arrow selection tool to select the hand and hold down shift to select the forearm and the upper arm as well. What we want to do is use our free transform tool and let's rotate this 180 degrees all the way around. Now we want her to hold on to the rope just below where it is. So just below the armpit. So I'm going to bring it over and then down just a little bit from here. Now this will give us the point at which she's going to hold on to the rope for each time. Now we need to set the body and have the body laid back. We'll zoom up just a little bit. In order to set that angle, I'm going to change the point of rotation for my arm from the central point, drag it up to the center of your hand. Then we'll go back down just a bit. When you click on the bottom edge, this will allow you to rotate the arm into position. So doing this, we'll pull it back about that angle there. If it's off by a little bit, we're going to nudge it over uh, to where it needs to be. Next, let's select the upper body and bring it back. So with our black arrow selection tool, click and drag over everything on the upper body. Now we don't need to have the arm and hand selected. So hold down shift and deselect both of those. Then swap over to your free transform tool and we want to change the point of rotation from the center by clicking on it and dragging it down to the center of her upper thigh. You can then back out, click on the upper edge, and you can see this will let her rotate down into position here. So let's rotate her all the way down until her arms start to match up with where they are on her shoulders. Now if it's off by a little bit, this is where you can go back in and also select the arms and move them up into position. I think she should move up just a little bit more from here. That looks good. And then again, I'm going to select the arms and the hand. Hold down shift. Oops, let's use our black arrow selection tool to do that. Hold down shift and get the hand. Now we can swap over to our free transform and place your point of rotation on the arm. I'm going to move this up just a bit as well. As long as it's nice and consistent, that'll be okay. That looks good with that position there. 
Again, I want to emphasize that if you have any parts of your positioning that look a little rough, that's okay. This is simply the rough animation to give us as a guide. Later on, we're going to go back in and clean up our final design. Now, another thing I like about this project is your reference image comes with a lot of secondary animation parts. For instance, her hair is also a thing that's going to be moving as she moves forward and backwards. Now, at this key moment, she's going to be moving forward to the right, which means we need to have her hair flopping backwards uh, against the movement of inertia. So let's select her hair, in this case a little pigtail. Let's change our point of rotation to the upper center and let's rotate it all the way back to have it moving in that direction. You can do the same thing for her little tuft that's up here as well. Now we don't need to move this one as much. We'll just have it flop up a little bit as it's moving forward. I can see one last thing I forgot to do was to rotate my arm or my hand so that it, there we go, matches the direction that it should be holding on to the rope. I'm going to place that right there and move that down into place. With that done, we've got this main keyframe established, and from here we can start establishing all of our other keyframes. So let's go to the next keyframe, which will be on frame number 17, and we'll insert a new keyframe there, hitting F6. And you can see this is going to swing her up and she'll start to bend her legs in this position. Now, in order to swing the entire body and keep it nice and in the same uh, position that it should be, let's select everything that's on here. We'll click and drag over if it's not done already. You can then grab your free transform tool and let's change the position of our rotation from the center point here by clicking and dragging it to the top of our swing. Now when you click on the edge, I'm going to click on this edge, this will swing it into place and we want to position her hand right as it's touching the rope of the swing. Now at this position the process is essentially the same. I'm going to zoom in so I can see it a little bit better. We'll focus on the feet first. Using our black arrow selection tool, click on the leg and hold down shift and get the foot and we want to have it start to tuck under as you can see with our little storyboard. Again, we'll grab our direct selection tool and let's change it to the free transform tool. And we want to be able to bend the leg by moving the central rotation down to where the knee is. Then we can click and drag and bend it underneath here. Again, if it's off by a little bit, that's okay because we're going to be able to go back and clean this up in post. Also from here, I want to point the feet just a little bit more. So let's select the foot change it to the ankle as its point of rotation, and we'll rotate this down to have it pointing just a little bit more. We'll nudge it over to make it look correct. Going up next, we want to pull the body up so that it's nice and almost parallel with the, with the rope of the swing. But remember, we want to keep this hand in the same position. So swap over to your black arrow, select all of the upper body, make sure you get each individual piece but not the upper part of the thigh, and then change over to your free transform. We're going to move the central point of rotation down to the thigh, so this upper corner, and let's have it bend upward until the body is just about parallel. I'm going to have it set right about there. Now, of course, we need to match up the arms to be in the correct position too. So let's zoom in on the arms. Choose your black arrow selection tool. And we'll do the upper arm, so this upper one is going to be roughly in the same spot. I'm going to have to move mine up just a bit. Choose your free transform. Let's have it rotate right here at the shoulder. Let's bring it all the way back. And then we can select her lower portion of her arm. And let's have it rotate at the wrist so that the elbow connects back in with the elbow down here. Now if it's off by a little bit, this is where you'll need to adjust both of these until it looks until it looks natural. So let's select both of these, rotate it back in to wherever they're going to meet. And I can see it's going to be down by just a bit more. So it'll take a little bit of playing around with just to get it right. But once you get the two rotations set and in the right spot, then everything should come together nicely. So it's going to take a little bit more finagling. Yours may be slightly different based on the position that you put for your hand. Whoa, don't want to get it larger. We just want those to meet up 
to be right about there. And we can always keep tracking this down and moving it until it looks really good. Later on, we'll go back and we'll clean this up in post. Now, keep in mind, we can also change it up at the wrist too. So if necessary, we can pull this back down to the elbow. Let's pull this up so that the wrist meets at the same spot. And we'll come back out for that. The final thing that I would do, since the body is coming forward, we want to have the head kind of lag behind just a bit. So I'm going to choose my black arrow selection and let's click all the parts that make up the head. Now I don't want the neck, so I'm going to deselect that. And let's pivot the head backwards just a bit. Change its point of rotation down to this neck point. And then let's rotate it backwards just slightly. So I can have her looking up and back as she moves forward. Now since that's lagging behind, all of her pigtails and her little bangs are going to also lag behind, so we're not going to move that. However, when she does start to come swing back down, all of this is going to start to shift forward. Let's do that for the middle keyframe. So let's go down to frame 33 and insert a new keyframe there. And then we'll back out so we can see the whole thing. And just like we did with the others, select all parts of the body and let's place our point of rotation back to the top of the swing and then when we swing her back down we want her hand to line up right with the rope and then we can adjust all the parts of the body to match everything else. Let's hit command plus sign and zoom into the body. We'll work on the legs first and for this we really just want to move these in just slightly. So I'm going to select the lower leg and the foot Swap over to my free transform tool and set the point of rotation back to the knee. And I'm just going to bring this in just slightly a bit more to kind of emphasize that backwards movement. Next, let's bring her body forward just a bit more. So we'll use our black arrow and select everything. But I want to keep the hand in the same position. So I'm going to hold down shift and deselect that hand. Swap over to our free transform. Set your point of rotation down to this hip and let's bring her forward past the bar just a bit more like this. Right about there looks good. Now with this done we need to match up the arms as well. So let's choose our free transform tool, get both of those arms, swap over to that. And since I have both of the arms, I'm going to change my point of rotation to my shoulder. I'm going to bring it back, all the way back, right about there. Now to get this forearm to match up, we're simply going to have to distort it just slightly. So I'm going to select just the forearm and swap over to my free transform tool. And with my rot point of rotation set back here to the elbow, when I hold down Option, I want to click on this edge and let's bring it in just slightly till it comes down to there. That way it'll match up and be in perspective. Now let's have the head rotate forward as well. In this case, I want to select all parts of the head and including the neck. And let's do Free Transform, change your free rotation point to this. And we'll have the neck come forward here and let's even have just the head come forward a little bit more. So I'm going to reselect everything but make sure that neck is not selected. Then we can change the point of rotation just for the head. We'll put it down here at the base of the neck and rotate the head forward too. So it's nice and tucked forward going this way. Since that's moving forward we can also have the hair move forward just a bit more. So I'm going to take this Let's have it move down this way. So by this position, it's moving fully forward, going against the swinging back of this one. And maybe we'll do a little bit for the bangs. We'll have that tucked up as well. Let's back out and go to our, excuse me, let's go back out and go to our final keyframe. I say final, final one that we have to set up. And this will be frame number 49. Hit F6 and let's swing her back to the very back position. Again, choose your free transform tool if you haven't already. Change your point of rotation to the top. 
And let's swing her back until her hand meets up with the rope that's on that part. Now by this position, she should start to be kicking back more and leaning back all the way back into our original position, which will be down at the very bottom. And we'll deal with that in just a second. So let's deal with the feet first. We'll select the foot and the lower leg. We'll zoom into it. Grab your free transform. Again, place your point of rotation right at the knee and let's rotate it back almost into full position. I'm not going to have it fully extended out. Now, if necessary, you may need to move this kind of back and up. And again, if it's off by a little bit, that's okay, but it's simply not going to be in the full seated position. I'm even going to rotate the foot to come back up a little bit more as well. Next, let's have the body start to lean back. And as we've done before, we'll select our direct selection tool. Select the upper portion, but we don't want to have the hand, so hold down shift and deselect the hand. Do make sure that back part is selected too. Grab your free transform tool. Let's change our point of rotation down to the middle of her hip and have her go not all the way back, but just starting to go back maybe about 45 degrees. About that far is good enough for this. Now we can reconnect our arms, so selecting the upper arm, we'll rotate it towards our wrists. And in this case, we need to elongate it back out. Now you can go over to your transform and change your point of rotation back to, or excuse me, your transformation back to 100%, and that will stretch it back out to the where it should be. And that's really what we want to do. And with that done, let's move it up to connect it to the wrist. Grab your free transform tool and let's rotate it until it appropriately touches. In this case, maybe I'll actually connect it at the elbow. Let's see if I can get it to rotate into position with the wrist. Still off by just a bit. So let's rotate this back a little bit more. This is gonna be the hardest part, getting everything to line up perfectly, but it just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of work to get it done. That looks good for that. Now the final thing for this is going to be her hair, and we want that hair to continuously come forward. In this case, maybe it'll come all the way forward in front of her, and this part's going to start to come back down into position as well, so we'll let it go back down with that. We'll back out, see the whole thing. And with that done, let's do the final keyframe. Now, right now we do have a final keyframe already established, but we want to have her be the exact same as our first keyframe. So what we're going to do is select that last keyframe and let's delete away what's already there. Then we'll go to our first keyframe on our reference layer. And with everything selected, let's go up to edit and copy. Then we can jump back into our last keyframe on frame 65 and let's go to edit and paste in place. This way it'll be exactly the same. So for now, we've got our major points of interest for each keyframe, and they've established this on five different parts. What we want to do now is to do an in-between each one of these just to give us some better definition of how everything is going to transition between one to the other. This means we'll need to create a keyframe at frame 9, frame 25, frame 42, and frame 57. All of those will be in between each one of those. And at each of these keyframes, you'll need to reposition the body so that it's in between both of the other two extremes. Now, in order to see both of those, it's good to turn on your onion skinning and have it stretch out so that you can see the next and the previous position of the body. From there, it may be very faint, but you'll get a good idea of what it looks like. Then you can choose your free transform tool, place your marker, in this case, right at the very top center where the line is, where the rope is, and rotate it to match the rope, just as we've done before, and then go through and break down in between the poses from here to here. And you'll do this for each of the in-between keyframes that we've just established. Has 
All right, with all of this done, you can see now that we've got a good rough animation idea of where all the keyframes will be for her body's position. Now in the next video, we're gonna go through this and actually rebuild the body of our individual person and then add all the necessary motion tweens to go along with it. At this time, you can go up to File and do a Save As. Do make sure your name is added to the title of your document and the format's gonna be an animate document. 